か。<笑><笑>皆さんもいつも聞いてください。Now, another physical piece of God we hold in our hand is the body of Christ, right? I mean, we can look at each other and we can see salvation in people. We can see、uh, people. I, I, I love to, to、uh, watch you when we're worshiping. You know, some will have their hands raised and, you know, just uh, into uh, uh, they're, worshiping, they're, they're worshiping the Lord and we're worshiping the Lord together. <clears throat> another. Physical piece of God that we hold is the creation. And,、um, you know, we can look at、uh, just our physical bodies or how something works or something and understand that、uh, a mastermind put, that, put us together, put the creation together. And,、um, you know,、uh, how foolish are people uh, to have uh, uh, faith in, like,、uh, Evolution, you know, I mean, it's like、uh, <clears throat> that takes a lot of faith, you know, to believe that we crawled out of a pond with like some snot or something. And, you know, it just takes a lot of faith to believe that. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know,、uh, we have a divine creator, and by faith, we, it says we understand that the worlds were created. And so、uh, the creation. Is a physical piece of God. Matter of fact, a lot of the prayers in the Old Testament and the New Testament start off with acknowledging God as the Creator. <clears throat> so,、um, but,、uh, you know, a lot of times when God does some work in our life,、uh, then,、um, you know, he,、uh, he takes us through a test. Now,、um, I, I've been through a test、um, a little bit here. And,、um, <clears throat> I would thank God for people like Megan Simmons and different things like that that helped us make the right decisions and, and different things. God just orchestrating everything uh, in, uh, in our lives. And, and、um, the first couple of days there, I was just on my knees before the Lord and, and just uh, uh, praying that、uh, God would heal us and, and different things. And, and, but I had to pray, nevertheless, not what I will, but thy will be done. And I didn't want to pray that prayer, you know, because I knew that、uh, Gene was close to death. I didn't want to pray that prayer. But when I submitted to that prayer, the power of God came in somehow or another, and I can't explain it, you know. And, and, and、uh, all of a sudden, Wednesday, she was off the,、uh, they took her off that high.、Um, That high flow oxygen, you know, and different things. And I just cried because I seen God heal her. I just seen God heal. And、uh, the, uh, the doctors, they didn't give her much of a chance when we first went in. They, you know, we put, had DNR orders on her and different things like that. And、uh, everybody around the country was praying, you know. And I'll tell you, prayer changes things. Yeah, prayer changes things. And、um, I just am so thankful that we don't live in this world. We live in a world that is outside this world. And we keep on praying, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You know, I get sick of these kingdoms down here. I get sick of the news channels. I get sick of the,、uh, all the,、uh, the fools. Uh, that are professing themselves to be wise. I get sick of all of it. And,、uh, you know, the psalmist, he was discouraged too. And in Psalm 73, he says, You know, I'm looking at all these uh, uh, people on the earth and they're getting rich and they're, 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 they're prideful and everything. And, and I, man, my, my, uh, uh, my uh, feet had slipped. So,、uh, Psalm 73. I'm going to go to Psalm 73. 
Psalm 73. I, like I say, when God puts together a sermon, sometimes I don't know what He's doing until I'm in the pulpit. Psalm 73. And the psalmist says here, now this is a psalm of Asaph. Uh, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are as are of a clean heart. Now, uh, that's why we say God is good all the time, right? Because He's good to us. Now, uh, it says, but as for me, he said, man, I know God's good. People with a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. Man, I've messed up. You know? I mean, the oppression of life is getting to me. And he says, uh, and he says, for I was envious uh, at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, man, why are, he said, why are all these wicked people prospering? And I'm sitting here, my steps are slipped. I mean, that's not fair. Yeah, you, took, you, you had your kids say that, right, to you? That's not fair, you know. And in verse 4 it says, For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness, and they have more than the heart could wish. I mean, you look at these people, and that's, you know, this life is all they have. And boy, they're after the money, they're after the greed, they're after the covetousness and everything else. Verse 8, they are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully and they set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue, uh, tongue walketh uh, through the earth. Therefore, his people uh, return hither and the waters of a, of a full cup are wrung out to, to, uh, to, to them. And they, say, and they say, how does God know? How does God know? And is their knowledge in the Most High? The man has set himself up to be God, hadn't he? Behold, these are ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. Man, I just, boy, this, I just went to church and it hadn't helped. Or, man, I got godly and it hadn't helped. And, and, and everything else, and, and I'm just uh, kind of feeling sorry for myself. And uh, everything like that. I've cleansed my hands in vain, it says. And it says, um, verse 14, For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. I mean, it just don't let up. I mean, I wake up in the morning and oppression is there. If I say, I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me. Why is everybody else prospering and I'm not? It was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood I their end. And you know what? I think in the sanctuary of God, we don't preach enough a, a hellfire against the wicked. Amen. Because when we come into uh, the sanctuary of God, we need to understand that the wicked are having a payday someday. We need to understand that the wicked are going to hell. And we need to understand that because a lot of times, you know, we come in our churches and we want to preach this nice, entertaining, flowery message saying, oh, just everybody's going to make it. No, they're not. All right. They're not going to make it. And he didn't understand it until he came into the sanctuary of God. And then he understood their end. He said in verse 17, Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood I their end. Surely thou hast set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down into destruction. You see, the wicked are not, are not going to make it to heaven. The wicked are going to hell. Okay? Now, <clears throat> verse 19 how are they brought into desolation as in a moment they are utterly consumed with terrors Jesus said it like this there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth they're 
suddenly going to be consumed with tears. For the first time in their life, truth is going to be spoken to them and they're going to understand it and it's too, going to be too painful and they're going to gnash their teeth when they hear God say, Depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. You see, there's a difference between the lost and the saved, isn't there? <clears throat> Verse 20. As a dream when one awaketh, so, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Now that's not a good place to be with God, that he's despising your image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my range, or pricked in my heart. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I uh, was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee, and thou hast held me by my right hand. Man, I've been cast down. I've been feeling sorry for myself. I've been envious of the wicked. But you know what? God's got you. God's got you. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. That's where we're going. We're going to glory, aren't we? You know? Verse 25, and this is a verse I wanted to focus on. It's a verse I've been focusing on all week. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. You know, when we were in the hospital, I said, God, we don't have anybody in heaven but you. And Lord, we don't have anybody on earth but you. I know these doctors and everything are, are, are you know, doing their thing. But you know, uh, we have you. Verse 26, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. For lo, they that are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. We put our trust in the Lord, don't we? We don't put our trust in man. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. When we look at God in the spiritual sense, we must understand that we walk in the spirit and not the soul. You see, um, uh, th that was revealed, or I was reminded of that this, this last couple of weeks. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Uh, it says, uh, you know, if the same spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal body. And, and I, so I was reminding God of his word, right? I'm saying, okay, God, uh, by your spirit, quicken Jean's mortal body. You know, by your spirit, uh, lift her up in the inner man. It's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. It's not by the doctors. It's by your spirit, oh, Lord God. We need to walk in the Spirit and we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh, the Word of God says. But a lot of times, you know, our, our, uh, uh, the devil comes in and says, oh, you know, you can handle this yourself. And in our pride, we say, yeah, you know, I think I can handle this. It ain't that big of a deal. Then it turns into a big deal. And then, you know, we start crying to the Lord. Oh, God! Turned into a big deal. But then, you know, he reminds us you haven't been walking in, your, in the Spirit. You've been walking in yourself. You see, we walk by faith, not by sight. In order for us to understand how to do this, we must go through tests. We must go through trials. Now, that's, uh, that's really encouraging, isn't it? You know? Um, count it all joy when you fall into different trials, uh, James says. Oh boy, I'm going through a trial again. Yay! Huh? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it, it, we have to go through trials. As we send our children back to school, for instance, and they will go through testing so that the teachers will have an understanding of where they're at in their academic achievement, right? You know, we used to have these things in school called SAT tests or something like that. And, you know, I thought they were all too hard anyway. And, 
you know, I was, man, I said, man, who knows this stuff, you know? But uh, anyway, muddle through it somehow or another. There are all kinds of tests. Sometimes I think that it would be nice if the tests uh, started in September and ended in June. You know, the Bible um, has all kinds of things to say about spiritual tests. I have selected some verses to let us know uh, what the mind of the Lord is concerning us in the spiritual test. Now, Deuteronomy 8, 2, And thou shalt remember all the way of the Lord thy God, which the Lord God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee, and to prove thee, or to test thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. So, uh, the, uh, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, now they came out of Egypt with a, the power of God and the blood of the Lamb, Right? We were saved by the power of God and the blood of the Lamb. But God didn't automatically translate them into the promised land. They had to go through a time of testing so God could prove them, right? And so that's the way, that's the way we are. Now, Deuteronomy chapter 8, 16, it says, Who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee or test thee uh, to, do, uh, to do thee good at the latter end. So God wants the best for us, but uh, in order for God to get the best for us, we have to go through tests. We have to go through trials, don't we? And these, uh, these uh, tests, a lot of times, they're not uh, pleasant to go through. They're grievous. You know, I mean, uh, I was going to the hospital every day at 8 o'clock and spending 12 hours in there and they'd kick me out at 8 at night and different things. And I mean, uh, I, I don't ever want to spend that amount of time in the hospital, you know, again. But, but that's, uh, but you know, it's just a uh, time of test. See, before God did something miraculous, miraculous He always tested His servants. Now, um, and in the uh, Bible, we have... Uh, uh, examples like Gideon in Judges chapter 7. God whittled down the army from 35,000 to 300 men, right? So uh, before God did something miraculous, miraculous, he, uh, he had to test Gideon uh, and he had to whittle down the army because uh, if the 35,000 had went in there, they would have took credit. See, God wants the glory. To God be the glory. Great things He has done. And so uh, uh, sometimes God tests us demanding great sacrifices. Remember Abraham when he was asked to uh, uh, offer his son Isaac? I mean, that was a, a serious test, wasn't it? That was a, uh, I mean, you know, here's this uh, miracle child. And, you know, I want you to go to this certain mountain and I want, to, I want you to sacrifice your, your only son Isaac. Now, I'm thinking... Sarah didn't know about this. <laughs> you what? You know. <laughs> Took me 90 years to get him here and you want to kill him? You know. So you see, sometimes God tests us by leading us in a difficult way as he did the children of Israel. The promise of the good land was before them, but before... Uh, but but uh, there would be a test before they could occupy the land of Canaan. In the church today, there are many tests and temptations for people of God. James, however, tells us to rejoice when we enter into these tests. Now, Deuteronomy 13 is where we're going to uh, be uh, in our text. Deuteronomy 13, this is a, uh, a testing time here. Deuteronomy 13. Now, the children of Israel, they're, you know, they're going to the sanctuary. They're, they're serving God. They're doing all this stuff. You know, they're tithing. They're, you know, uh, everything like that. But it says in Deuteronomy 13, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. Now, we've, we've seen these guys, right? Or these, these women that come, come around. Boy, they got a dream. They're going to tell you your bit. You know, I've got a word for you. Boy, a red flag goes up so fast when that happens. You know, or gives you a sign. Of one, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. Oh, man, this must be a true, true deal. It came to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Hey, you know, Christianity's good, but uh, you know, Buddha, he's pretty good too. 
You know, uh, you can get a lot of insights out of psychology that the Bible don't speak of. You know, and these people come along and, and they have, a, a you know, an agenda and different things. And they say, let us go after the gods whom thou hast, have not known and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. You know, we have churches today, or so-called churches today, that say, you know, it's okay if, if, uh, if, if you're a homosexual. You don't have to repent of that sin. You know, God, you know, any love is good love. And all this stuff. And, and they tempt people to go in the wrong directions. They tempt people to serve the gods of idols. And they tempt people to serve the gods of self. And they say, you know, uh, you know, we, God just forgives everybody. No. God doesn't forgive everybody. Matter of fact, Jesus said, when you stand praying, forgive. Because if you don't forgive men their trespasses, God won't forgive yours. How do you like that? It says, verse 3, Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or the dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you or testeth you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You see, it's not uh, uh, because we have to be single-minded toward the Lord. Who in heaven do we have but thee? And on earth there is none that I, I desire but you. And it says in verse 4, Ye shall, uh, ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear Him and keep His commandments and obey His voice and you shall serve Him and cleave unto Him. And that prophet or the dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord God commanded thee to walk in, so shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now this is the way. Walk ye in it. You see? And a lot of people say, oh, you don't have to uh, walk in every way that the Word of God says. You don't have to cleave in the Lord. You can have other stuff, uh, you know, and, and it'll uh, uh, spruce up your life and different things. Who in heaven do we have but Thee, O oh Lord? You see, God raised up prophets in Israel during those times when the people needed to be called back to faithful worship of the Lord. It has often been said the prophets weren't just foretellers, they were primarily forth tellers who declared the word of the Lord in the name of the Lord. The faithful prophet spoke in God's name and gave only God's message for God's glory and for the good of God's people, you see. They weren't after uh, you know, material gain or anything. That was Balaam's deal, right? The, the prophet after material gain. We have a lot of preachers in today's world that are in it for material gain and different things. Like today, there are many prophets out in the world, but not all of them are of God. God tested His people to see if they would continue to serve Him or follow other gods. You see, uh, the key phrase in Deuteronomy 13 is let us go after other gods, verses 2 and 6 and 13. In this paragraph, Moses describes a prophet who predicted an event and it occurred, which was the test of a true prophet, uh, Deuteronomy 18, 21 and 22. But then the prophet invited the people to join him in worshiping other gods. Now why would a prophet deliver a true message followed by an invitation to worship false gods? You see? And it comes in subtly sometimes. Oh, let's go over here and do this. Let's go over here. You know, you can, you can still uh, go and, and do your own thing and, and, and serve God. Come back to church, repent for it the next time, and different things. It's, a, it's false doctrine, folks. See, for the same reasons formerly Orthodox religious leaders in the church will abandon their calling and get involved in cults or even organize their own cults. Pride, the desire to have a following and, and, and exercise authority and the desire to make money. We have the Jim Joneses in the world and the David Koresh's and different things that, that were desired to be uh, have people follow them. The Israelites knew that God's law prohibited the worship of idols, but they are always unstable people who will blindly follow a successful religious leader without testing their decision by God's truth. 
any thing that I tell you, I want you to prove by the Word of God. Okay? I want you to bring your Bibles, uh, you know, and different things. Uh, my, my daughter, uh, she, uh, we were in the hospital, and my daughter uploaded the uh, Bible on my, my phone. Now I got right there on my phone, you know. So that was, that was, I thought it was a good tool, you know, to get any translation you want and everything. So, uh, but um, now Moses made it clear that the Word of God was true no matter how many miracles or signs that a prophet might perform. We don't test the message by supernatural events. We test the message by God's Word. Okay? So, uh, I mean, even Satan can perform miracles, right? And, and he's going to be performing miracles in these last days. Uh, you can check it out, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, Revelation 12, 9, and different, different places in the Bible where Satan is performing miracles. And not everybody who addresses Jesus as Lord and performs miracles is a genuine child of God or servant of God. Matthew 7, 21 uh, through 23. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those that do the will of my Father which are in heaven. Many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, haven't we done many wonderful works in your, your name? Haven't we cast out demons in your name? Then I will profess to them, Depart from me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. These were religious people. These were, these were people in churches and different things, but they did not have a conversion experience. God sometimes allows these things to happen in order to test His people and see if they will obey His Word. Even if this man had been originally called of God when he asked the people to disobey God's law, he ceased to be a true servant of the Lord because he enticed the people to rebel against the Lord. Uh, he was uh, to be put to death. Now that's a pretty severe sentence, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not only that, if you read on down in Deuteronomy 13, if you, uh, you know, if your family turns you away, if your wife or husband turns you away, you're to put them to death too. I mean, that's a serious chapter, Deuteronomy 13. You know, if the city uh, turns away, you're to destroy it and burn it with fire. I mean, it's a serious chapter. It's a serious thing to turn away from God to other idols. And it's all through the Word of God. I, uh, I talked to a pastor one time here, here in Fernley that told me that each individual had to have a special word from God or a special experience in order to be sure that God was among them. I looked at him and says, I have the Word. I have a word from God. For anybody. You see, I, I, I told them I have a word for them and it is found in the very word of God. We are not to be carried away with every wind of doctrine, but we are to fully trust the word of God. When, when I ask uh, uh, candidates, for instance, uh, that are being tested uh, into the ministry uh, at, at an ordination service, I, I'm only interested in one thing. Do they have a conviction that this is the word of God? Can they be trusted with the word of God? There have been several times in this church that certain people have come in uh, with different doctrines based on experiences and that they say they, they have from God. And I'm not opposed to experiences. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, I'm not ex opposed to experiences. As a matter of fact, I can tell you about some I have had. But uh, when the experience becomes the standard and not the Word of God, you have entered into idolatry. And I teach preachers, uh, and we raise up to preach the Word of God and, and, and then uh, run to the cross because the cross is the standard for biblical preaching. Isaiah the prophet said, When the enemy shall come in like a flood, then I will raise up a standard against him. There's only one standard, and his name is Jesus. He was raised up on an old rugged cross, uh, and he shed his blood. It is the living Word of God. God clothed uh, his Word in human flesh, uh, and he dwelt among us, and his name is Jesus. Jesus was tempted and tested in the desert, but he came out victorious. Uh, Jesus was tempted in the garden as he struggled with the 
will of God and he prayed, God, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thy will be done. But the Father, and but he obeyed the voice of the Father and came out victorious. Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. Jesus didn't want to be tortured to death. He offered up these prayers with strong crying, it says in Hebrews 5, 7. We need to understand that uh, when, when Jesus uh, uh, submitted to the will of God, he was, uh, he was sacrificing his whole body. Now the children of Israel were tested right after they had seen God destroy the Egyptian army in the Red Sea. Three days later they ran out of water in the wilderness of Shur. No water. And then, uh, and, then, and then they found water, but it was bitter. And so here, are, here they are. They just saw God deliver them out of Egypt by His own power, by the blood of the Lamb. They just saw God one of the greatest miracles on the earth opens up the Red Sea. They walk across. God drowns their enemies. I mean, that's pretty good evidence of God, right? And, you know, but then they, uh, they get up and they say, hey, we can't trust God anymore. Where's the water? We need water. Oh, we can't drink this water. It's bitter. Let's go over to uh, Exodus 15. Exodus 15, 22. Exodus 15, 22. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out to the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. And when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name was called Marah, which means bitterness. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Now, uh, instead of trusting in God, now I, I, I struggled through this last week. And God would remind me of things. He says, you know, the very hairs of your head are numbered. Now, now the top not numbered as much anymore. That's not, that's not funny, buddy. Uh, you know, uh, but... Um, but I got I make up for it down here, you know. And, <laughs> and you got to it is a good looking beard. I mean, you know, uh, uh, so anyway, but um, uh, but anyway, I was reminded of the intricacy of God's <coughs> knowledge, and I, so I I would remind God. I says God, the hairs of our head are numbered, and Lord, you know everything that's going is going on inside of Gene. I mean, she wasn't breathing uh, good oxygen. I said, Lord, get your air anyway. Give her some extra oxygen. And he did. You know? And, uh, and, and different things like that. And, and he, he knows exactly what's going on inside of us all the time, doesn't he? And you know, God knew exactly what he was doing in leading the children of Israel. It wasn't Moses who was leading them. It was God. See, God led them by a cloud by day and fire by night. It was God leading them. And so the, the children of Israel could not figure out. And so when they, when they came across a difficult trial, they, said that they came back to Moses and murmured against Moses and murmured against God. Three days! But all it took from the Red Sea Hallelujah Party on the other side of the Red Sea when God destroyed their enemies to murmuring against God. Wow. Now it says, verse 24, and, and the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree which uh, he had cast into the waters, and the waters were made sweet. And he made uh, for them a statute and an ordinance, and he, what? Proved them or tested them. And said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Wow! Can, you think we could have that today too? If we trust in the Lord with all of our heart, it's the Lord that heals us, isn't it? 
He's God that heals us. He knows all about us and different things. It, it, uh, this was a, a, a trouble point in the test. How would they respond? Would they call on the name of the Lord, trusting Him to provide? Or would they show unbelief by grumbling and complaining? They grumble in unbelief, failing the test. In a Baptist church, we never have trouble points, do we? <laughs> Moses did the right thing by turning to the Lord and crying out to Him, who answered by giving Moses insight about a tree that could make bitter water sweet. You know what the tree points to? The cross. The cross of Christ can make the bitter waters. That's another sermon, but anyway. They experienced the Lord's healing in those bitter waters. I told you I was not exposed, or not opposed to experiences, right? It was a good experience for the children of Israel, wasn't it? God gave it to them. Now, here is a picture of how the cross, the tree, can heal the bitter waters of any heart. Bitter waters are the experience of every selfish choice and every sinful motive. Those bitter waters cannot be sweetened by any natural means. And people try all kinds of natural cures for the elements of life, but there are no natural cures for bitterness and rebellion. You know, there, we see commercials about drugs on TV. You're depressed, take this drug. It'll kill you, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, how dumb is that? Why you won't be depressed anymore? That's for sure. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, uh, cures, let's see, uh, there are no natural cures for burden, uh, bitterness and rebellion. The messes of selfishness or the uh, agony that eventually follows arrogance. There are no uh, chemical cures for either. People try to sweeten the pains of life with drugs or alcohol or relationships or any number of man-made remedies, but none work. God wants us to come to Him. He calls us to embrace the cross and the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when He died on the cross and, um, and in the resurrection provides healing to the worst case heart, a simple admitting of our sin, turning from any wrong, and crying out to Him in faith and repentance brings His kind of healing, supernatural sweetness. Now, Exodus... 1526, I'm going to read it again. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ears to his commandments, and keep all of his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The psalmist said this, In his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Jesus said that he came to heal the broken heart and set the captives free. As you look around uh, uh, here, there are saints of God that can testify of the joy of the Lord because they have trusted in him that will never leave you nor forsake you. When I was in the uh, hospital this last week, the Lord reminded me that the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come to give life and give it more abundantly. I says, Lord, if that's true, I want you to give my wife life. If that's true, I, I, I want you to uh, uh, infuse life into her. And he, you know what he did? Amen. He did. As we go through this life, there are going to be tests of our faith in God. When Jesus' friend <coughs> Lazarus was, was sick, he waited for two days before he came and raised him from the dead. When he arrived, Mary and her sister Martha told Jesus, Jesus, if you had been here, our brother wouldn't have died. They knew Jesus was the healer. They knew Jesus had the power. If you had been here, my brother would not have died. So why the test? Jesus wanted Mary and Martha and you and me to understand that a greater uh, that, uh, understand a greater revelation of the power of God. Mary and Martha knew that Jesus was the great healer, but after Lazarus came out of the grave, they knew that Jesus was also the resurrection and the life. They knew that He could raise life. They knew that He had all the power. They knew that He was God. And how are you walking this morning? Are you walking by faith or are you walking by sight? We are lived daily by feeding on His Word because He is the living bread. And when we do, we receive that sweet water which will, uh, will uh, we will receive that sweet water which will answer us with the joy of a heart for God. Most of the time we find the children of Israel in default and walk by sight what they could see, not by faith. They succumb to material grumblings Rather than trusting, than having a trusting, praying heart, 
May we pass the test that the Lord has for Firmly First Baptist Church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You see, it's not whether or not we're going to have them, it's when. When are we going to go through them? Now I'll have to admit, I was concerned for my wife. And I, uh, I understood that I couldn't make God do anything. I called upon Him for His great mercy. His mercy was new this morning and said, Lord, by Your mercy we're not destroyed. Lamentation says, Lord, I call upon You for Your mercy. I call upon You for, for Your goodness. I call upon You for Your healing. <clears throat> I really couldn't bring much to it. But I asked God. And He loved me. And He loved Jean. And he did miracle after miracle. And still doing miracle after miracle. Keep on praying. She's, she's really weak and different things. But, you know, she's going through, you know, mind stuff and you know, everything like that. So... But I know God. He got us out of the hospital. We walked out. Well, actually, she was pushed out of the wheelchair. But, but, you know, we got out. And everybody said that we weren't. But we walked out. So we just thank, I just thank the Lord. Is there any public decisions that need to be made this morning? And a public decision, I mean, is there somebody here that just needs to to be